What's up, brand new I Am Rap Report Stereo Podcast coming live and direct from Las Vegas. Vegas, baby. Vegas. We're talking Super Bowl. It's Rockham's birthday. Celebrate Rockham. I think Rockham's birthday should be a national holiday yearly. LeBron James cannot contain himself. LeBron James was serenading Kyrie Irving the other day. And me and the young shooter break down the sickest documentary of all time, a film called Abducted in Plain Sight on Netflix. It bugged us both out. You got to check it out. All that and more in a big body, hard hitting. I am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. Miles, Jordan, let me get something real nice, something real proper, but most importantly, something real funky. All right. All right. Brand new. Banging. I am Rappaport Stereo Podcast live from Vegas. Vegas, baby, Vegas. Listen, I don't know how the fuck I got down here, but I'm here. Um, long story short, I am doing a stand-up comedy show in and out. No planning. That's why I didn't give a heads up to anybody on social media. It's actually a private thing. Um, and by the time you're hearing this, I'll hopefully be safe and sound back in Los Angeles, California. Um, if you never listened to the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast, my name is Michael Rappaport, a.k.a. the Gringo Mandingo, a.k.a. the Jake LaMotta of podcasting, a.k.a. the Segway King, a.k.a. the White Chocolatito, a.k.a. the Pusha T of podcasting, a.k.a. the White Arsenio Hall, a.k.a. White Mike, a.k.a. Bird, a.k.a. Mr. White Folk. Um, and like I said, I am down here in Las Vegas um, doing comedy, one and done, in and out. Last minute planning, last minute opportunity. Um, the last time I was in Las Vegas was for the Conor McGregor Floyd Money Mayweather fight, um, which was 2017, the summer of 2017. And um, this is just like a midday, a midday during the week. Um, when I was down here last time, it was a fucking zoo house. Straight up zoo house. Um, so it's not as crazy down here. I have checked into my room. I am recording from my room. Later on, the young shooter, who I believe is losing money at the blackjack and or craps tables and or Texas Hold'em tables, he will be joining me. or he Or not. Or not. The young shooter hasn't been heard from in two hours. Um, hopefully he will be able to jump on the mics, uh, at some, at some point during this podcast, uh, or, or I'll just leave him down here. That was the rule. See, I don't, I don't fuck with the gambling. I don't play slot machines. I don't, I don't do any of that shit. I come down here. I mind my fucking business. I try to treat it like a business trip and get in and out as quickly as I possibly can. I am, uh nasally congested uh, because that's what happens to me anytime I'm in, I am in a hotel. Uh, I have the windows open. I mean, it's a mild day here in Las Vegas. Um, and like I said, I won't be here long. And speaking of business trips, that's why I'm the Segway King. I have to say, I, I, I love my non sequitur Segways. Um, speaking of business trips, in six days this Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday is going down, and I am expecting a very good game. I am expecting a high-scoring game. I think that Todd Gurley is going to be a factor. Obviously, the stars are going to be factors. Aaron Donald, uh, the great defensive tackle of the Rams. But I think the other key person for the Rams' success is is Indomitian Sue, who's played very well. Um, and if he can get going and and really turn up the volume as he's done in spots this season, and obviously he's done it throughout his career, most uh, notably as a Detroit Lion, if he can sort of have a flashback game and touch Tom Brady, because everybody, listen, I ain't, I ain't dropping any fucking secrets here. If you can touch Tom Brady... Uh, the Los Angeles Rams are going to win. Um, 
Because those guys, if they get their hands on him, they're going to be physical. They're going to be rough. And the goal is going to try to be uh, within clean play and not get yourself penalized to knock Tom Brady the fuck out, as it always is. Um, but just like in the 80s with, with Sugar Ray Leonard uh, and Magic Johnson and Michael Jordan in the 90s, uh, it's, it's hard to bet against Tommy fucking Brady, um, the fact that he's done it again, the motherfucker's 41, he's Botoxed to the fucking, to the top of the cup. I saw him on an interview uh, this weekend for, in, 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 after, in, at halftime of the All-Star, All-Pro game, it's called the All-Pro, or the Pro Bowl, the NFL Pro Bowl game, he's Botoxed up, looks great, that fucking jawline, those dimples, that chin, he looks Fucking great. He's a freak show. He is a Botox freak show. He's got great hair. And until proven differently, I, I, I have to say, I'm, I'm predicting the, the Patriots win. Now, I've gotten a lot of flack uh, from some of our friends of the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. Some of you fucks who listen to the show have DM'd me, insulted me, criticized me, and said, how could you root for the Patriots? I, I, I'm not rooting for the Patriots. I'm not going to bandwagon myself and front like I'm some Los Angeles Rams fan. I'm going to be sitting there uh, eating a, a different variety of nuts, um, walnuts, almonds, candied uh, almonds. Uh, they have wasabi almonds that I'm very fond of, uh, a cheese plate, different uh, meats, um, and pizza. Uh, homemade pizza, uh, me and my wife are getting into that, and I'm going to be enjoying the game on Sunday, okay? I don't really, truly, I don't give a fuck. I don't have the, the visceral hate of the Patriots that I normally have. Maybe I'm all hated out. Maybe they broke me. You can accuse me of that. You could say I'm broken. That's fine. But I'm not sitting here fucking cheering for the Patriots, Okay? But I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, I really want the Rams to win. Uh, I, I'm a man without a team, okay? Uh, but I'm expecting a great, very exciting, very competitive game on Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday. I can't wait. Hashtag can't wait. Um, good news to report to everybody. Good news, and I appreciate all the support and patience from the entire I Am Rapport Stereo podcast fan base out there worldwide, uh, I pleaded, I begged, I, I, I uh, put on a shit-talking exhibition in the last podcast, uh, going at that freak, Kurt Schilling, that pock faced punk, James Woods, and Chachi. Um, after we put out some stuff on social media, I, I informed the I Am Rapport Stereo podcast fans at large, AK, the Rapper Pack, that the official... I am Rappaport Twitter account at I am Rappaport had been suspended without any true blue explanation. They basically accused me of impersonating myself. Well, we have freed ourselves up. Thank you to everybody that set out hashtags on Twitter. Free I am Rappaport. Thank you for being patient. We are back. We are back. All charges have been dropped. Twitter sent me a, a, an email. You know, they, they act like it's like a real thorough investigation, like it's some, you know, real, uh, they really looked into it deeply and everybody checked it out and, 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 and everybody, you know, looked and then it ran through all these proper channels. And we got this email this morning. It says, hello, this is a confirmation that we have received your report regarding impersonation on the Twitter platform. Upon further review, we have unsuspended your account as it does not appear to be in violation of the Twitter rules. Your account is now unsuspended. We appreciate your patience and apologize for any inconvenience. I said, thank you, you guys. Thank you for the thorough, thorough investigation. I'm glad you made the right decision. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty. The I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast Twitter account is finally free 
at last. And we couldn't have done it without you guys, without all the support of you, the fans, the rabid fans, the supporters, and the people that believe in doing what's right. And Twitter, they stepped up to the plate and they fucking did what's right. Now, if you are hearing any noises in the background of this podcast, Miles Davis, the sound engineer of the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast, sound engineer extraordinaire, he likes clean sounds. But as you can tell, I am now walking on the balcony. You hear that echoey sound? That's going to drive Miles Davis crazy. But it's such a beautiful, beautiful afternoon day here in Las Vegas. Um, and I'm just taking in the sights of this shithole. This city is a shithole. What I see right now are manufactured good times where people will throw away their fucking lives. They'll throw away their families, their homes, and their houses just to piss it all away at the blackjack table, which I think the young shooter is actually doing as I podcast. But if you do notice any changes in the sounds, uh, that is just because I will be going in and out, on and off of the balcony here at the Cosmopolitan Hotel, um, which is a decent room with a shitty mattress. I have to be honest, the mattress feels like it has been slept on, laid on, and, and freaked off on. It's got lumps top to bottom on it. Um, and, and I don't get freaked out by the germs because the sheets look cre- clean. And I never, I never sleep nude in hotel beds. Uh, because true story, in I don't remember what year. I'm not Mr. Year guy. Oh, in 1996, this happened. I'm not a guy who could do that. But when I was filming the movie Metro with Eddie Murphy, I was in and out of hotels in San Francisco. I was moving from hotel to hotel, and I had an apartment in San Francisco while I was filming Metro for a short period of time. And one morning, I was, uh, I remember this very vividly because you don't forget this. Um, One morning, I was uh, laying down nude on the couch, listening to some jazz music, watching uh, sports. I remember it very vividly, and I'm not Mr. Memory Guy. And while I was touching myself, not in a masturbatory way, just, you know, holding my loaf, checking myself out. You know why? I, I noticed there was a scratch in my pubic hair. I thought it was just a normal scratch. Then it was scratching a little more, scratching a little bit more. And I have very uh, red pubic hairs. Now, you might be going, yo, yo, Duke, what the fuck are you talking about? There's a reason why I'm saying I have very red pubic hairs. So my very red pubic hairs and my very white skin, especially in that area, because sun doesn't touch that area, I, I looked down and I saw crabs and I saw them clear as fucking day. And the reason why I was able to see them clear as day is because of the very pale skin and the very red pubic hairs. Since that incident, I sleep in shorts and underwear whenever I am in a hotel. Now, you might be saying to yourself, you a nasty motherfucker, Mike Rat. Well, how many chicks were you sleeping with? Were you at a strip club? No. The irony of it was I was in a relationship and I was, I was 100 and 150% uh, monogamous with one woman who was clean. I was trying my best at the time to, to do that, and I was doing that. And the irony is, is that by sleeping in different hotel beds, Me, the gringo man dingo, got crabs. And I had never gotten crabs before. And knock on wood, I hope I never get crabs again. Because when you see little crabbies running up and down your pubes, they're like miniature cockroaches. It's disgusting and frightening. And at 26 years of age, you might as well have just treated me like a 16-year-old. Like, you're, you're, you're not fully matured or developed. At least I wasn't. Um, and I went and got the cream and this, that, and the other. I had to tell my girlfriend, yo, I haven't done anything. And fortunately, she believed me. And uh, the, the, the moral of the story is uh, it might not be a, a girl or a guy that gives you crabs. It might just 
be the holiday in you stay at. That's right. I am Rappaport Podcast. So Friday, uh, this past week and this past Friday, I uh, got a, a bunch of texts from friends, a bunch of DMs from uh, people on Instagram saying, you got to look at LeBron's, LeBron's page. you got to look at LeBron's page. And I was like, what the fuck happened now? I go to LeBron James' Instagram story page, and he has added Kyrie Irving, and he is singing... A slow jam. He is serenading Kyrie Irving. It says, at Kyrie Irving, remember this was our joint or remember this was our jam. And first I'm going like, Duke, Duke, if it was like some like hype shit, I, I, I'd get that. But like, why was this your your jam with, with Kyrie, number one? Number two, you're a fucking Los Angeles Laker. We know that the friend, there's friends. We know that you played in the World Games, the Olympic Games, and obviously you guys were teammates. We know you're friends. But you're a Los Angeles Laker. You are not supposed to be cadaddling, canoodling, and serenading anybody from any other team, particularly the Boston Celtics. I, I, I don't understand what you don't understand about that. Us as fans, we want to keep the illusion. But better yet, we, 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 are, we are entitled to keep the illusion that you guys do not communicate, that you're not uh, 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 singing to each other, singing slow jams to each other during the regular season. We don't even want to know that you hang out in the offseason. Because of social media, it's different. It's not the 80s. It's not the 90s. I understand that. But why, if you, if, if you were having this moment, you were like, yo, I'm thinking about my man Kyrie, no Bruno. And you, you, you were listening to this song. Why didn't you just text it to him private? That's why I fucking can't stand LeBron James. It's not the on the court stuff. It's all the off the court bullshit. It, it, it's like I said, you're injured. You haven't played in a month. Why don't you lay low? Why don't you lay in the cut? Why are you singing slow jams? I think it was a Fetty Wap song or some shit like that to Kyrie Irving during the middle of the season. Do, do you want Kyrie Irving to come play basketball for the Los Angeles Lakers? Is this your way of recruiting him with song, with a serenade, serenading him out to Los Angeles? Yo, he not checking for you like that, Duke. You a married man. What the fuck is you doing? I don't even see you on there singing to, to your whiz, Duke. But you're singing to Kyrie Irving? And then a couple of days after this whole bullshit with LeBron, everything is like the, as LeBron turns, Anthony Davis, who everybody loves, everybody respects of the New Orleans Pelicans, the uh, unibrow, he announced that he is going to opt out of his contract. Oh, no, he announced he wanted to get traded. And, and basically, he wants to get traded now. Um, long story short... If they don't trade him now, they'll get nothing for him later. So he was doing the New Orleans Pelicans a solid by, by saying, uh, I believe it was Sunday night, trade me. Trade me now, otherwise at the end of the season, I'm fucking leaving. He didn't say that in those words, but that's what the, the saying I want to be traded, that's what that means. I'm bouncing. I'm not staying here. So get something while you, while you can so I don't leave you guys high and dry and they don't boo me. They're going to boo you, Anthony Davis. And now everybody's saying, oh, he's coming to Los Angeles. And I think he is coming to Los Angeles. And, and I hope there's a day where I don't stop watching NBA basketball. It is such a, a, a pleasure in my life now. It's been such a pleasure in my life for as far as I can remember. 78, 79. I was eight, nine years old. But this bullshit... There's friends and family, banana boat, teaming up. I want the players to have rights, but you shouldn't have the rights to form the teams you want. There's got to be some competition. There's got to be some levels to the competition, some, some balance to the competition. The, everybody can't play for the Lakers or the Clippers. Everybody can't play for the fucking Warriors. The New Orleans Pelicans, who fucked up by not re-signing Boogie Cousins. Remember that. 
Remember when you're watching the Warriors blast through the second half of the season. Don't be mad at Boogie Cousins. Don't be mad at the Warriors. Be mad at the fucking Pelicans. The Pelicans said, uh, we want to make sure that there's no motherfucking collusion. And we want to make sure there's no motherfucking tampering. Like meaning like, you know, like they're, they're, they're basically what they're saying is, what is this shit? I mean, the contract is the contract, but, but like Le- LeBron James doesn't run the NBA. Listen, you see how easy it is for LeBron James to be out of the league and the league carries on. He missed 30 days. When LeBron James leaves the NBA, just like Michael Jordan, just like Larry Bird, just like Isaiah Thomas, just like Kobe Bryant, just like Shaquille O'Neal, just like every player, the league will carry on. I think this fucking guy has it in his head, and I think fans sometimes think, oh my God, when he leaves, what's going to happen? Nothing. Great stars are brewing. The Donovan Mitchells, the Jason Tatums, the Russell Westbrooks, the Steph Currys, the Kevin Durants, the Ben Simmons, the Joel Embiid, whoever you're into, the NBA will carry on without fucking LeBron James. If Anthony Davis does join the Lakers this year, they're going to have to uh, just eviscerate that entire team. It's going to be Kuzma, Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, draft picks and all that. And then what do you have? You think you're going to win a championship with just Anthony Davis? Then like, oh, maybe we could get Kawhi in the offseason. Fuck this bullshit, man. The, I'm telling you, the, the, the NBA needs to step in. There needs to be a third tier of this. It can't be, I'm a free agent, trade me, da-da-da-da-da. And it just works like that because every team like Oklahoma City... They're lucky they haven't lost Russell Westbrook. They're lucky that Paul George signed. Uh, Anthony Davis, he's like, fuck it, I don't want to play in Smoothie King Arena. That's the name of the arena in New Orleans, Smoothie King Arena. He's like, I want to go to L.A. He's not coming to the Knicks. I'm not even getting my hopes up that Anthony Davis is coming to the Knicks. He's going to the Los Angeles Lakers. I I I could just fucking feel it. He's got the same agent as LeBron James. It's that guy, Rich Paul, who's one of LeBron James' best friends. I could smell... The whole thing coming, and they're going to get their asses kicked in the playoffs. And I'm going to be happy about it. And if I need to, I'm going to whip out the fucking broom. And this year, I ain't showing up to any games with just a little broom. I'm showing up with one of those gardening fucking things. You know the big sweeper brooms, the, the, the big body wide joints, that you, the push brooms? That's what I'm showing up to, to watch LeBron James get his ass kicked once again in the playoffs. It's a very, very competitive season. Giannis Antetokounmpo, I didn't even mention his name. And there's so many good players, young players, veteran players. The other night, uh, the Golden State Warriors played the Boston Celtics in Boston. It came down to the wire in the fourth quarter. Kyrie Irving, who I know I talked shit about just a week ago. And, and I don't ever need to be reminded, yo, you was talking shit just a week ago. I, I, I'm very aware of who I talk shit about. My memory for who I talk greasy about is is sharp. My memory in real life is not that sharp. Who I talk shit about? The Golden State Warriors beat the Celtics, but Kyrie Irving with that fucking basketball, dribbling to the basketball, I've never seen anything like it. And there's so many great ball handlers, Tim Hardaway, Isaiah Thomas of the Pistons, Tiny Archibald, Calvin Murphy, Magic Johnson, the way he handled the ball. Uh, uh, Kenny Anderson, Rod Strickland, Pearl Washington, uh, Jason Williams. I mean, there's tons and tons and tons of great ball handlers. Steph Curry's ridiculous with the shit. But I've never seen anyone who's basically unstoppable when they are heading towards the basket, dribbling the ball. He's fucking ridiculous. Kyrie Irving is fucking ridiculous with the basketball. Golden State Warriors won. Boston Celtics lost. But it was a great game, and Kyrie was just sick. They were all sick. Jason Tatum was sick. Durant was sick. Klay Thompson was sick. Boogie Cousins, who's played like four games so far, he's slowly getting his shit back. That was good basketball. One of the things that I think is just uh, really uh, um, tacky 
um, that's going on. And, and, and all the NFL players are doing it. They all got it from the soccer players who have done it for years and years and years. The NBA is now doing it. Uh, the jersey swapping after the games, uh, which is like a pre-planned thing. It's not like these guys didn't pre-plan it. Uh, they're, they're like talking before the game. They probably even text him before the game. They're canoodling before the game or they're deep. Yo, I'm going to meet you at half court. Yo, let's swap them jerseys. Let me get that jersey. All right, bet. It, it, there's nothing impromptu or unplanned about it. Now, obviously, Dwayne Wade, one of the great players in NBA history, one of the top five two guards in NBA history, Michael Jordan, Kobe, Dwayne Wade. I mean, th these are like... The usual three, the big three of two guards. Dwayne Wade isn't playing anymore. He's retiring after this year as a Miami Heat player, as he 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 should. Although I think he could play more, but he's he's not going to win any more championships with the Heat. And 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 he's going out while he still looks good. He's not hobbled. He's having a very productive season. After every game, he will swap jerseys with anybody who. Ask. The other night, after the Knicks played the Miami Heat in the garden, Dwayne Wade went to center court and gave his jersey to Tim Hardaway Jr. Now, I can understand why Tim Hardaway Jr. wants Dwayne Wade's jersey. But what the fuck is Dwayne Wade going to actually fucking do with a Tim Hardaway? Hardaway Jr. 2019 Nick Jersey. Scrub his fucking... Scrub the wheels of his fucking car. Mop his bathroom with it. It's not getting framed. That's not a prized possession. Yo, D-Wade's like, yo, yo, Gab, Gab Union, yo, check this out. Yo, I got this 2019 Tim Hardaway Jr. Jersey. Who, give, who wants that? D-Wade, if, if these assholes want your jersey, give them your jersey. Stop fronting like you want a Colin Sexton rookie jersey or a Tim Hardaway 2019 jersey. What the fuck are you going to do that? Give him your sweaty jersey and keep it moving. You don't got to front to these dudes. You don't have to appease these dudes. You're not framing a Tim Hardaway New York Nick 2019 jersey. Just throw that shit away. Just tell him, yo, Tim, keep that shit, Duke. I'm good. I don't need that shit. Nobody wants that shit. You're not even going to be a Nick in a couple of months. What? I said it. Stop fronting to these dudes. You're being too nice, Dwayne Wade. I am Rappaport Podcast. So fucking Bernie Sanders, the gefilte fish king, has announced he's running for president. Kamala Harris has announced she's running for president. And Starbucks CEO and founder Howard Schultz is also running for president. I don't know what the fuck is going to happen. I don't know if, if these three guys and gals can beat Dick Stain, Donald Trump together. I don't know if anybody uh, in that group has the fucking chutzpah, the balls to go low, into the dirt, into the fucking mud to take down Dick Stain, Donald Trump. I love Bernie. I love him. As an uncle. That socialism bullshit you're kicking, Bernie, the gefilte fish talk, the onion bagel bullshit, and the schmear, I just don't think it's going to happen. Kamala Harris, she talks good. I don't know. I've said it. You need to be able to go low because Dick Stain is going to go low. Howard Schultz, the guy... Mr. Starbucks, he's worth $400 billion. The guy who is allowing every and anybody into the Starbucks bathroom right now. He's turned the Starbucks bathroom into a homeless shelter. I mean, we, could, we could say what we want to say and wrap our heads around it how we want to. I, he should just open homeless shelters. Because every time I go into a Starbucks, and I'm going to be honest, I go into Starbucks every day. I go in there every day. I get my venti iced soy vanilla latte. And if I have to use the bathroom to uh, drop a deuce, take a leak, wash my hands, whatever I need to do in there, I go in there 
and I'm hesitant because you never know what or who. You never know what or who you might find in a Starbucks bathroom. Okay? Now, this fucking guy, Howard Schultz, who's a Brooklyn guy, he's in the projects of Brooklyn. He grew up poor in the projects of Brooklyn. He was on 60 Minutes this weekend, and he said he's running for president, and he is running for president as a centrist independent. And I'm like, Duke, all this, I'm running, and I'm changing the way it's happened, and I'm a centrist independent. I never, I'm going to keep it funky. I never heard that word before, Howard Schultz, a centrist independent. I don't know if you made that shit up. When you're rich like that, you could just make up words. You could get a team of people to make up an entire fucking word, a centrist independent. My man, we need to go back to basics. If you're going to bring down Dick Stain Donald Trump, I don't care if you're from Brooklyn, fucking uncle Bernie Sanders or Kamala Harris, if you're going to take down Dick Stain Donald Trump, you need to bring the motherfucking noise. You need to bring the knives, the guns, the bombs, the motherfucking nunchucks, the bayonets, every single thing you can bring. All this, oh, when we go low, we go higher. This is not American. Da, da, da. Yo, you better be ready to talk shit. Because Dick Stain Donald Trump is always ready to talk that good shit. He's bout it, bout it when it comes to talking shit. As soon as Howard Schultz, the Starbucks dude, said he was running for president, Dick Stain set out a tweet saying, Howard Schultz doesn't have the quote-unquote guts to run for president. I watched him on 60 Minutes last night, and I agree with him that he, oh, and he says, I agree with him that he is not the smartest person because Howard Schultz, you know, he said, I'm not the smartest person, but I have the smartest people around me. Dick Stain, Donald Trump went on to say, besides America already has that. I only hope that Starbucks is still paying me their rent in Trump Tower. That's the president. That's the conservative president. And I was thinking about this word conservative. We're conservatives. We like old fashioned values. I looked up the word conservative. You know what it says in the dictionary? Not about the conservative party. It says favoring the preservation of established customs and values and opposing innovation. This whole idea that these people call themselves conservatives, Mike Pence, I truly, truly believe that you sleep with one single die. A die is one part of a set of dice. I guarantee you that Mike Pence sleeps with one die. Stuffed, stuffed real nice, real proper, all up in his asshole. Like imagine sleeping with a, a, like a dice up your ass. That guy is questionable. This whole idea that we're conservatives. The dictionary says tending to be moderate or cautious. Oh, really? Dick Stain Donald Trump, you're conservative? This clown also tweeted, this was another tweet that got my attention. He said, numerous states introducing Bible literacy classes, giving students the option of studying the Bible, starting to make a turn back, question mark. Great, exclamation part. Dick Stain, Donald Trump, you don't fucking read the Bible. You don't follow anything biblical. There's nothing biblical. There's nothing conservative. You're a sinning Sick motherfucker, you're a sinner man. What part of the Bible, what verse in the Bible says, thou shall not grab him by the pussy? That's all I want to know. My final thing uh, about politics, and it's just another, uh, another uh, fucking crummy Jew. I hate to say it. This fuck Michael Cohen. I never even heard of this place. He's going to a prison in upstate New York called Otisville. Otisville Prison, a well-known prison for Jewish offenders. I, 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 this is real. Like this, this literally should be a fucking Saturday Night Live sketch. Well, what is a Jewish prison? I didn't even know this existed. I just hope that I don't have any cousins or relatives that wind up in this shithole. But apparently it's cushy. It's nice. It's 75 miles northwest of New York City, 
with an antique weight room, an uneven tennis court, but no swimming pool. This is real. And he got to choose. I guess when you make deals, I guess you could choose. But I didn't know there was a Jew prison in Otisville, New York. Uh, I would love to go up there and see what kind of crooked, fucking, penny-pinching, stealing, creep cock sucking Jews are up there. My people. My people up there at Otisville. Dean, get the fucking mic. Today's episode of the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast is brought to you by Away Luggage. First class luggage at a coach price. Me and Dean, the young shooter, went to Las Vegas and we used our Away Luggage carry-ons to Vegas today. Oh my God, and I, I love it. it. It's, it's fantastic. So, I mean, it's better than anything that I brought on a plane or traveled with. The lock built into the zippers is a nice touch and I was able to charge my battery while in transit, I love my away luggage. I take it everywhere. I go carry on for short trips and the large bag for longer stays. It's light and it looks fantastic. You Dude, know what I love about what? it is that you could take it anywhere, like tablet, whatever device, and it's never dead. Never. It'll never die. Never dead. I love my away luggage. Choose from a variety of colors and four sizes. The carry-on, the bigger carry-on, the medium, or the large. Both sizes of carry-on are able to charge all cell phones, tablets, e-readers, or anything else that is powered by a USB cord. A single charge of the away carry-on will charge your iPhone five times. Away luggage. Away also gives you a lifetime warranty. If anything breaks, they will fix it or replace it. No question asked. You want to try it? You can try Away Luggage with a 100-day trial. Live with it, travel with it, sleep on it, Instagram it. If you have a problem with it, you can return it, no questions asked. Free shipping on any Away order within the lower 48 states. Carry on sizes that are complement with all major US airlines while maximizing the amount of luggage you can pack. For $20 off a suitcase, visit awaytravel.com and use the promo code CHAMP during checkout. That's awaytravel.com, use the promo code CHAMP during checkout, get away for the best luggage today. That was fantastic. I love away luggage. All right, fuck, pick up the mic. On. It's on. It's on. I've been recording. You heard me oh, recording. Okay. All right. Let's All right. Do it, man. Shooter, we're in Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. You've been uh, you've been exploring uh, the the sights and sounds of Las Vegas. Well, I've been exploring the inside, inside. Well, you went out to Las Vegas, so the, yeah, I went out a little bit just to get some air. But for the most part, but I've you, been you, indoors. you, you have explored the legalization. Oh, oh, yes. of marijuana. Oh, legalization. Yes, yes, I have. Um, I it tripped me out because I didn't realize that it was legal out here now. But uh, I think the first thing that we did was we got in. Well, you did it. I did it, I because you don't smoke, but we got well, it. I smoke in general, but I haven't been smoking because of my bronchial situation. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, but no, I went into a, a MedMen. Uh, they have it in LA. It's like the fucking Apple store of dispensaries. Literally, it's like the Apple store. Is it a dis- chain? It's it's a chain. that They're there with iPads to greet oh. you at the door. They have like a genius bar and everything that is laid out, like each they have like each strain of weed laid out on the tables the same way that they have iPhones laid out. Like I didn't the same know that. shit. Oh, fuck. I wish I had. They have one in Los Angeles? They have Where a bunch it? in LA. It's, it's fucking everywhere. West Hollywood, all this shit. But so somebody in MedMen, because we had the Pot Brothers at Law the other day, uh-huh. somebody at MedMen is like the Steve Jobs of weed. So, some. Uh, Yes, obviously. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot I mean, of companies have, out there. If they bro. don't have if they're not like a one and done there's place. There's a chain. Yes, yes, they're they're a chain. But anyway. So what'd you wind up getting, brother? I I winded up getting why well, wound up getting uh What do you mean? This strain wound up winded well, up. Well, cuz you said winded up and I think it's I think it's what you I wound up getting this, not I winded up getting this. Okay. I wound up getting Well, you don't know the difference between there and there how to spell I've, those I've things, actually so. learned that since my time on Twitter. I will oh, be honest. Okay, good. All right, good. Well. There is what? There is what? What do you mean? T H E R E is E R E. It's like, hey, you're going over there. And and if I say, uh, there, there, what's look the other at that one? couple? They're they're so cute. That's T H E I R. That's no, that's T H E Y apostrophe. Yeah, that R-E. they are. I they know are. that. Well, no, you didn't know. But what's T H E I R? Mr. That's like their bag. Like, oh, like that's whole- their bag. Like a possession. 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 Got there. It. All right. Th- that's a good uh, little quick uh, anyway, little that vocabulary was a little... English 
grammatical lesson of the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast. You learn something I don't every think, day here. I don't think anybody came to listen to the show for that. I don't think there's not one person that said, I'm going to listen to the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast, and I want a lesson on they, their, and they are. But I can no guarantee one... you that they're happy they did. Okay. All right, so go ahead. So what'd you wind up buying from so Mad Men? So anyway, Men? I wound up getting... Um, is it Med Men or Mad Men? Med Men. Mad M-E-D. Men is the, sh- is the TV show. Med, like medicine. You know, like medicine. And, and, and did you get held up at the door? Did they jam you up at yeah, the door? Yeah, they got me fucking jammed up at the door. They got security. You know, it's like I'm going through LAX. You know, But fucking, they just need an ID. Pat- they need an ID. And then I go through the next checkpoint, which they're asking me ID again. And then I finally am in there. And then they have like my own personal assistant with me. And he's like, what are you looking for? And I say, I need that heavy duty shit. I need the indica. I need to be melting into my fucking couch. Um I that's that's my favorite. That's my go-to. I like that nighttime sleepy time good skunky funky shit and that's why I always go to my go-to purple punch. That's, that's your my shit. strain. So purple punch is different there's different strains of purple different brands I mean of purple punch, but I went into MedMen and this guy said you're looking for something heavy. And so I said, yeah, I'm looking for something heavy. I need, I need the heaviest indica top shelf that you got Damn, here. Damn, you're crazy. So he said, let me take you over here. And he goes, we got a strain called Purple Punch. I said, oh. I said, That's like fucking say no music more. To my ears. Yeah, yeah, I said, say no more. Just put it in the bag and let me walk out the fucking door because I'm getting that. Okay, so you smoked some Purple Punch. I didn't yes, smoke I have. with you. Um, you're a f- I've said this before, and just so if anybody ever seen Dean Collins in public, um, and shout out to all the I Am Rap Poor Stereo podcast fans that have been coming to the comedy shows. Oh, yeah. At the comedy store, you guys were there. At the improv, you guys are sh- you know, you're shouting this out. I appreciate it. It means so much to me. It gets me so hype uh, when I hear you guys. And I know that I Am Rap Poor Stereo podcast uh, fans are there because I know that I got a couple of people that are totally on my side. Um, but how do you know whether you're doing well? Because I've been going to all the shows and you have been doing a great job. But how do you know when you're doing a good job if all the fans are there? If there's no fans in the audience. Then you just, they, I mean, yeah, listen, I'm worldwide. Y- yes. Uh, you know what I mean? So it is, it is, it's going to do what it's going to do. Uh, <laughs> okay. But I love when there's specifically I Am Rap Poor Stereo podcast fans and they make themselves known and be heard in the place to be. Dingo. Baba Booey. Yes, all Ba-ba-fooey. that. Baba all that, right? All that, all that. They okay. shouted you out from the side they of the did. stage. They did, they said shame shooter. game, they said shooter. Yes, they did. Somebody requested a live shame game. We, we haven't figured that out stay, uh, on stage. But but that's not what we're here to talk about. So you smoked a little purple punch, and where you been for the last two hours, bro? <laughs> that is a great question. Well, I smoked the purple punch. You know, they got a weird thing over here with balconies and windows out in Vegas. They don't want people jumping out the fucking windows. Um, you know, fair enough. But yes. uh, so I, I've we're in a suite. We're in a nice suite over yes, here. They yes, got sir. you, uh, you know, laced up real proper. Yeah, yeah, suited and booted, real good. And, yes, real nice, so, real proper. So I smoked. I smoked a couple of those dubs uh, on the balcony. And, but you said that gets you melted down. It, you, the purple punch usually puts me to sleep. So, where so, I'm like, I'm fucking like. But you went and played the craps yeah, yeah, tables. Yeah. And the, what did you play? Blackjack. Texas well, I. Hold I, them? I Texas Hold'em, I and, did. And what did you win, dude? Because if you're fried out of your mind, where's your money at? Okay, dude? bro. I'm first of all, where's I your money don't, at? I really am not liking your tone when you're asking about the money thing. Did and, you win money or lose money? Okay, Where so the fuck you been I for the last the money. two hours? I was at I was at a two hundred dollar no limit Texas Hold'em buy-in. Okay, so right. for your fans that play poker, they'll know what that is. It's and the two, fans that don't play poker, it's a cash game. I could give a shit. No. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, they, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you don't play poker, you don't play cards, whatever. And they don't care. Okay, fine, but all you but need to know. But they do care about where your money's at, Duke. Fine, that's all. Okay, so I sat down with $200 in a cash game, which means it's not tournament. I can get up whenever I want to get up. Yes. So I sat down $200, and uh, I walked out. I took this kid's money right next to me, and I walked out with 328 You won 300 I, I You won, I won 128. 128 Okay. And then I went, and then I left, and then I went over to Blackjack because you know that's the thing with me is I never know when to walk away. So I was really proud of myself for leaving the poker table. Like, thank you, I appreciate your money. You won the hundred twenty-eight. I'm going to cash out. But then I because passed. because you you you've told tales on this podcast oh, in the past. Some good ones too. Some really good ones. You, with you my, could get on some 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 yeah, like poker after dark story hour. You know whatever you want to call it. Um, but but the problem is I was ready to come back here and say, Michael, I won $128. This is such a great start to uh, the trip. 
but then I passed the blackjack table. And then I had to go, I, I bought into the blackjack table for, you know, 120 bucks or whatever it was. And, and then what I, happened with boom, that? Boom, 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 boom. I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning. And then I go, fuck it, that? yes. Uh, you know, what Lynn, happened with that? Lynn is helping me out. She's my dealer and we're fist bumping each other. And I thought we had a nice bond. And then um, what happened with that? I How fucking lost it, lose? bro. I, I'm about even now. So that 128. About even? Yeah, I'm about even. I put about a 20, even? I put a 20 in this slot machine, a 20 in that one, three bucks in that one. I don't count the slots. I count the blackjack and the poker. Okay, so you're about even, which means you're a little less than even because you're not up. So, so yeah. we, we have we have we have we have a, a few more hours in Vegas. Yes. Do you ever look at the bright side of things? I, I, because you know the it's bright just, side of things is this. The bright side of things is this. Is what is I didn't fucking throw away my money at the blackjack. That's on you. Okay. No, I don't so need, that's I the bright side of things for me, dude. Though, don't dude. talk about the bright th- bright side of things to me. Okay. Uh, the bright side of things is. Uh, I'm good, Duke. I've been up saying, in the room like, cooling out watching casino like okay, a pregame. Uh, okay, dude, but like, do you wake up angry? Because like you sound, you know, you sound angry. Like, no, like what is so, what, what is good. angering you, I'm bro? I'm straight. I'm no, good. you're not straight. I'm good. And you're not good. Like, you're angry. Like, no, you're angry Do I LeBron. sound angry? Yeah, you sound no, angry. No, 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 that's just New York accent. You ain't used to it yet. <laughs> Whatever, New York man. accent got a little bit more bite than most accents. <laughs> Whatever, man. Well, fuck. I, you don't like British accents. I can't stand I don't that like fucking British accent. Accents. Listen, don't spin it around on me about me being angry. I'm, I'm not just spinning it, bro. You, but like you said, I'm, 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 I'm about even, and I, I'm not really getting a straight answer Listen, from you. I'm very particular with my friends. If you have bad, if you're stand, if you're standing next to me at the blackjack table, and your vibe is like. I don't know. We got to get out of here. I just kind of feel like going or, or I don't know if you should do that one. What do you get do? the fuck out of my way? So who sounds I don't angry want you. now? What? Who sounds angry now? I'm not, I'm just you telling you. Real, no, no, no. You sound real angry. I'm not angry. You tell your friends I'm to go fuck my themselves friends at the black table? I say table? that they're jinxing me or they're bad luck. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> if you've seen Silver Linings Playbook, I'm on that De Niro. Uh, if you move the remote control Love to the left, movie. you move it to the right. I highly recommend rewatching Silver Linings Playbook for, for yeah. Bradley Cooper Jennifer Lawrence, and yes. of course, Bob De Niro. It's a very, very good movie. Speaking of very, very good movies. I think I introduced you to a new movie that you saw. No, because actually, I don't know who it is. Jordan got it from a fan, and I, I, I don't know what the fan's name is because we are, as always, going raw dog without a bag. We don't fact check. Non-fact checking, but a fan of the I Am Rap Poor Stereo podcast hit me up and said, this movie has the sickest fuck of all time. This should be the sick fuck of the week official movie. Oh, wow. And that same day, you had mentioned this movie. Oh, so that means something was in the air where you you needed to see it at that point. And, And the name of the movie is on Netflix, and it's called Abducted in Plain Sight. Now, before we go any further with this, I want to preface this. I think everybody should watch it, but do not watch it and go, what the fuck is Rappaport saying? Because listen to this disclaimer. I think everybody should watch it, but it is offensive. It is disturbing. The guy in it is sick. A lot of the people are in it are sick. There's a lot of really fucked up subjects dealt with, but it's so nuts. And, and, And I'll explain what the movie is in a minute. But the takeaway that I got from this movie, because it's all about behavior and what the mind can let you get away with. The takeaway I got from this is our our minds, our our psyches, our sanity is fragile. Yeah, and completely moldable. So do you want to explain what this movie's about? Oh, man. Um, I'll I'll let you explain it. you, You chime in. Okay. It's about a young girl who was abducted by a by, close family by a close family friend like an 11 year old girl or t- no she was 12 years old girl she was abducted by a close family friend now the first 20 minutes are just very 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 disturbing it, it it involves pedophilia which I'll never make any jokes about well there's nothing to joke about that but there's, but, there's nothing to joke about it but 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 within the first half of the film this guy, this disturbed guy, befriends this family, and these parents have 
three, you know, two young daughters or whatever. But this, and he has he's, kids. He has kids too. But he's, and a wife. He's so sick in the mind that he is targeted. He's a predator, and he's targeted this girl named Jan, who is ten years old or whatever it is, the youngest daughter of the family. And so he befriends her parents in the in the movie. They go and out then, to, and then goes after them in a go, way that's so twisted. He gets the whole family, the mother, the father, the daughters, all wrapped around his finger in Literally. like a love triangle. And the daughter is like, I want to marry him, mom and dad. And and it's it's And it's, basically she's abducted. Yes. Returned. Yes. She's abducted for like thir- 30 days, returned, and then convinces the parents. And to not drop, only convinces the parents, convinces the police and the FBI to dro- drop it, charges. It's so crazy. You guys gotta watch this fucking it, thing. Again, I don't want you watching it going. Why are you telling me to watch this? It's a this? documentary. It's, it's real a documentary, shit. And, and, and I suggest watching it during the day. I don't suggest watching it alone, and I suggest watching with all the lights on if you're not watching it during the day. Yeah. But the name of the film, which is the official sick fuck of the week film. Abducted in plain sight. On Netflix. So I want to give a shout out to the guy who uh, recommended we watch it. I want to give a shout out to all the people that send us uh, uh, sick fucks of the week. But I just want to say, when you watch the movie, we're not talking about just the guy being the sick fuck. They're there are know. multiple sick fucks in this documentary. They're, 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 they're going to know. Okay. They're, they, they need, the when parents you're should it, be ashamed. Everyone should be ashamed, except the daughter. She's I just a victim. Feel, but they're pred- predators are real. I mean, you watch that shit and you're like, God damn. Like, fucking... A little girl coming out and saying, you know, this happened, like, Jesus Christ, trying to believe somebody. I mean, that, that shit put things in perspective for yeah, me watching it, that. It, it's very, very disturbing. It's uh, uh, on Netflix again, uh, Abducted in Plain Sight. I am Rappaport Podcast. Um, other than that, I just want to say, um, you know, Vegas is nice during the day. Um, Shooter, we're going to need a follow-up on you. Yes. I'm going to tell you this, though. You know when we're leaving, you know how we're leaving, and you know what time we're leaving. By plane? If you get caught up in some bullshit... I'll call you. No, 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 no. And if you get caught up in some bullshit, there's not going to be Where's Dean. I'm leaving town, and I'm not checking for you. You're not going to just leave, you know, you're not going to leave your home. I'm not... No man left behind, that's what they say. I'm not waiting, okay? I'm not, yo, have you seen this guy? I'm not... Uh, 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 looking around, I'm not going in. No, you look around, but nah, you'll definitely I'll, I'll double check. check, check I'll text you once. I'll You're text not... you twice. I'll call you a third time, and then I'm I'm out. I'm okay. Out. Okay. Well, I don't plan on look. Those days are behind me. I don't get I don't <laughs> get crazy, and uh, but my mood could shift within 30 seconds. So that's the scary thing. I don't know what the future holds for me, but my or my wallet. But let's hope that I walk away. We both walk away. Big. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not worried about me. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not worried about what I'm walking away with. I'm not playing any tables. Okay, I'm not making you play a table. So you're like, oh, but, you, but don't try to. No, like, you sound stressed. So I just, I don't want you to get. I don't want you to get all hot. You sound stressed. Bothered. You sound angry. You sound stressed. Are you trying to mad shame me? I'm not trying to. Ma- I, you trying yeah, to mad I couldn't shame? fucking mad shame. Nah, you. they ain't Someone mad shaming me, Duke. You ain't mad shaming me. Uh, 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 what is it? Purple punch. Yeah, yeah. That ain't happening. Yeah, Duke. listen. When I was walking down the hallway to come to your room to go fucking podcast, <laughs> when with you, you were late. You were late. I wasn't late. I could you late. hear your fucking screaming voice. I fucking hate oh, LeBron. Oh, you could hear all the way down. You could hear. Elevator. You could hear the the raging bull of podcasts. Yes. The Jake Lamont of podcasts yes. in the room yes. with a nose strip on, doing what I do best. Is that what yes. you're saying? Yes. Well, why why do you get to say you're the Jake Lamont of podcasts? How come someone fifteen else, rounds? But doesn't someone else say other that? people say it? I know, but people could go. Other I didn't people come up say with it, all my monikers. Gringo Man Dingo. My wife came up with that. Jake Lamont of podcasting. I came up with that. The okay. White Chocolate Tito. Someone else came up with that. Okay, okay bro. Okay. Milk. I, could, I didn't come up with I, that. I, White I, Mike. I didn't come up I with could, that. I touched a raw nerve. Some, bro. some of them I come up with. Some of them I don't. But I will give you all the monikers. See, I am Rapport Stereo Podcast, live and direct from uh, uh, Las Vegas, the Cosmopolitan Hotel, Super Bowl week. With the young shooter, Dean Collins, as always, I appreciate the support. Of course, man. I'm, I'm so happy to support you. No, I was talking to the fans, Duke. I wasn't, oh. wasn't talking to you. Was not talking to you. And on that note, Miles, Jordan, please take us out of here with something real nice. Oh, yeah. Something real proper. Uh-huh. And, of course, something real funky. Uh-huh.